Okay, so what I want to do then is solve a little problem that I've got. I want to get a program, in this case my monitor program for my Z80 Playground, and I want to assemble it and get it into this EEPROM here, which is a, a 32K Atmel EEPROM, which I've put on a second socket because its legs were starting to get a bit worn out. So how do I go about that? What tool chain do I use in order to get it there? Well, this is what I'm using at the moment. Firstly, Visual Studio Code, which is what you can see here. Uh, Visual Studio Code is a free um, Microsoft product, and I find it to be a very good place for writing code and as the sort of the first part of my tool chain. So here's my program here, and it's very easy to set up a few extensions to VS Code. The ones which I use that are the most useful are the syntax highlighting. So it sets the comments into green. Um, and puts the commands into blue and that sort of thing. Um, the one that tells you the references and lets you follow the references, so we can see, here's my configure UART subroutine. We can see the places where that's called from, and we can go the other direction too. So if you want to jump to main loop here, we press F12 and we um, jump to where main loop's defined. So that's pretty useful. And there's uh, a couple of other extensions I've got. I think I can do things like yeah, I can hover over a, uh, an op code and see some descriptions of it and that kind of stuff. So it's, it's, it's a pretty good development environment, actually. So I've got it set up. So if I um, assemble, so I'm going to assemble this into a hex file, um, then I'm using Pasmo. Pasmo is a free assembler that I've used quite a lot in the past. I think it's specifically designed for ZX Spectrum assembling, but it seems to do a good job of any kind of Z80 assembling. And I've configured it to compile into hex, well, assemble into hex format. So within Visual Studio, you can press a button and get that assembled. And this is the, the hex file. If you're not familiar with hex files, I think they're the best format to put things into because um, each line of the hex file is in ordinary ASCII characters, not in binary format. And um, the lines of the file tell the uh, receiving system not just what the data is but also where you want where you want that data to be put so each line says the address where the bytes in that line are going to go and my program assembles into not a massive hex file and the hex file also contains some sort of uh, check digit thing which is this uh, these blue letters at the end of each blue numbers and letters at the end of each row. So it has a few advantages over a, a, just a straight bin file. Uh, I think it's the best, certainly worked out the best format for me to assemble into. So once I've got things assembled, I need to put them into the EEPROM. So I've got my EEPROM programmer here. And this EEPROM programmer is built on um, a mega. Let me pull that apart. Oh. Well, that was harder to pull apart than I thought. There we go. Uh, it's, it's based on an Arduino Mega. This is a, what's that one? A geek right? Yeah, that's that's just a cheapo Arduino Mega that I got off eBay a few years ago. And um, the the EEPROM programmer is basically a ZIF socket and a load of wires and this connector here, which plugs it in. Um, because all the brains of it is done in the Arduino itself. So that plugs in there. That sits on top of there. And uh, there's a couple of LEDs just to show the the status of whether programming was good or not. This is the ZIF socket that it plugs into. Slightly over large ZIF socket actually. I should have gone for the one that was a size smaller, but I guess I could program bigger EEPROMs in it as well. Lock that in. That plugs into the PC. The next stage then is to get the program from that hex file transferred onto this EEPROM over the, uh, the USB link. So the way I do this is I use TerraTerm, which is a free term terminal emulator, and that is currently configured, uh, it's connected up in fact to the serial port. So here we are, COM4, which is the serial port. So if we if we reset the Arduino, this is my um, EEPROM programmer, and I'm using um, it's, my, it's a bit of software that I wrote on the Arduino and it uses X modem to transfer the data over from the PC to, to the programmer. And the reason it uses X modem is I found that just trying to just transfer it in one big glob over um, to the Arduino, it just didn't work. The Arduino hasn't got enough memory to buffer it all and isn't quite fast enough to do the job. 
Um, but if you use Xmodem, it can send it in little packets, so it works quite well. So all you have to do is um, press P on my uh, program there, and then do transfer Xmodem send pick the file you want to send so monitor.hex in my case and the file gets sent over there uh, it doesn't take very long at all and now it's been transferred onto that EEPROM the final stage of the process is to take the EEPROM out of the programmer and put it into the board that you want to use it in so this is my Z80 playground board put that in there now I made a bit of a mistake on this board I should have left space to have a ZIF socket on here so I could just put that in and out easily and in the version 1.1 of the board I have left enough space for that but I haven't got that built yet so that's that going and then I can connect up the FTDI connection to here and we should see the monitor program running okay so here we are in the monitor program screen if I reset the Z80 playground we get its opening screen I should be able to look at page zero of the RAM there it is and I should be able to look at the memory map perfect we've got some ROM we've got some RAM Everything's looking fine. So I've managed to write a program in assembly language, I've managed to assemble it using Visual Studio Code and Pasmo. I've managed to transfer it onto an EEPROM using my homemade EEPROM programmer and TerraTerm to do the X modem transfer part. And I've managed to get it into the circuit and it's all running fine.